Hey guys, welcome to week seven of the Healthy Happy Gut program. This week what we are discussing might be a little bit uncomfortable for some of you, but what we're going to talk about needs to be said because it shows us signs and symptoms to look out for and what they might indicate. So we're going to talk about poo this week. So, uh, first up, what is the what does the ideal poo look like? So you're looking for a smooth, easy to pass, you know, it doesn't take very long, it's sausage-like in shape or log-like in shape, um, and it comes out in a reasonable size, it's not too big, um, and it's not coming out in pellets or too um, little tiny pieces, okay? So different types of poo that we can have, we have loose bowel movements, now these can range from runny liquid like, um, they could be little small blobs, it could be um, just very very mushy and soft and um, quite quick to pass or comes on quite quickly so you need to go with urgency. Now what that indicates is there's fast transit time and what can cause that is um, it could be reactions or to sensitivities like food sensitivities such as dairy or gluten. Um, dairy tends to be more diarrhea based, however it can go vice versa. And um, what else? It means that you may have a lack of fiber in your diet or maybe even a lack of protein. Basically, it's not staying long being digested for very long in your tummy and it's coming straight through very quickly. So what that then means is you're not absorbing the nutrients as you should be because your gut hasn't had that time to actually be able to do so. So um, yeah, like I said, different gut bacteria can do it. Like maybe if you have salmonella or something similar, parasites can do it, um, food sensitivities can do it or allergies. Um, if we've had too much coffee, that can do it, um, or too much caffeine. And also if um, we might be, we might have a bug or we've um, got an illness of some sort as well, okay? So basically you don't want to have loose bowel movements and you, if you are experiencing them at least once weekly, there is something going on with your gut. But even if it's not every day, if you do tend to have a loose bowel movement, you know, once, twice, maybe every day, then that's a sign that there's um, definitely something going on in your gut that needs to be addressed. On the other side of that, we have constipation. Now, what this can look like, you can still be going to the toilet every day, but if it's hard to pass, takes a long time to pass, if it is hard, if it is dark in colour, or if it is lumpy, these are all signs of constipation and we need to do something. Um, there's something causing a slow transit time. Now, something that most people don't tend to think of with constipation is there is often an emotional aspect. So a lot of people who tend to hold in their emotions or hold on to grief or trauma or um, some sort of stress, then they can tend to hold on to their bowel movements as well. So if everything else in the gut has been done right, you've done your gut cleanse, you've done your repair, all that sort of stuff, and it's still not happening every day or it's still difficult to pass or taking a long time, then we'll need to address the emotional aspect of that to make things better. So stress definitely affects our gut in some form or another. And same with diarrhea, if we are feeling highly stressed or anxious, of course that too can create loose bowel movements. The other thing with constipation is we really, really want to be moving our bowels at least once daily, one to three times daily, uh, with formed uh, sausage-like smooth bowel movements. Because if we are not, that is waste sitting in our gut. And what happens there if we're not releasing it is that toxins are released into our body. So when toxic, um, toxic matter is released, that can make us feel really lethargic, we can have headaches, we can um, feel sluggish, we can feel depressed or sad, um, those sort of things. So we really want to aim to move our, bowel, um, our bowels at least once daily, one to three times daily, ideally. So we've talked about loose, um, constipation, 
and how normal healthy bowel movement should look. A good reference point for this, which I'll post in the comments, is the Bristol stool chart. On that, you should be aiming for a number four, which is your smooth sausage shaped um, poo. And you know, it's a reasonable size, it's not too large, it's not too small. Um, there's no mucus or blood. When there is mucus or blood for mucus, uh, some people have difficulty recognizing what mucus might look like. In babies, it kind of looks like it's not really at the end of the day, so it can be clear. Um, it can have discoloration to it or poo color to it, but generally it's like that mucus, um, it's not like egg white like consistency. So uh, when that comes out in white blobs, sometimes that's an indication that we have candida. So that's what candida can come out looking like. Um, it can also indicate that there's gut irritation. So something is happening in the gut, the gut's reacting to, and the gut's reaction to help things get better is to release that mucus. So then that comes out in our bowel movement. So what we would address then is, is there candida um, or is there something triggering at, um, aggravation or inflammation in the gut that we need to address? And often it does come down to, is there candida or dietary um, foods that we're consuming that we are reacting to? Blood is another one to look out for. If it is that fresh, bright red blood, that's a sign that it's more towards the end of the colon. So often that can be due to hemorrhoids um, or tears in the bottom. When it is darker in color or black flecks, we really need to be careful of that because that's telling me that there is blood further up in the digestive tract, okay? So when there is blood, there is irritation and inflammation and we need to address what's causing that. So even if you've had blood in your bowel movements and you've gone and had a colonoscopy and you've got the all clear, what that doesn't tell me is that are you reacting to certain foods that haven't been tested. And a lot of the time, if we take those aggravating foods out, we'll see a huge improvement with our bowel movements, which of course affects our overall health. Because like I said, if we are experiencing constipation, it's going to affect our moods. If we're experiencing diarrhea, we're probably having a little bit more anxiety. Um, you know, it affects our daily routine because if you're having diarrhea on a constant basis, you know, you want to program your day to be near a toilet. So we really want to make sure that we're aiming for a number four on the Bristol stool chart and that you have a nice, healthy looking poo. The other thing that we need to talk about that we haven't discussed is colouring. So too dark or black means it's um, not a good sign. So you can have black poos that are loose, but generally they tend to be um, black, dark, hard to pass and are a sign of constipation. However, um, we want a medium brown colour, a dark brown colour for our food. If there is yellow, paleness, clay-like or greyish white, um, yellow, dark green, these are all signs that something else in the gut is going on. So when we have that paleness or yellowness to our bowel movements, that is a sign that there is some liver, um, there is some liver damage there that needs to be investigated. We need to check up on that. So, um, and the dark green is especially seen in little babies that have dairy intolerance, um, but adults can also uh, experience dark green poos. It's not a very good sign. Um, can happen after a night on too many beverages, I have heard as well. So obviously there is some sort of liver link there as well. Um, what else? So yellow, pale, dark, and then ideally your medium brown. So I think that's it with colours. Um, obviously if there's any red, then we need to make sure that it's not blood, or reddish or pinkish, it's not blood, or you haven't eaten a lot of beetroot or something of that colour, okay? However, yeah, ideally medium brown, smooth, sausage-like form, um, and easy to pass. 
you shouldn't be spending a long time on the toilet. So if you are going to the toilet for a number two and you are spending more than, you know, three to five minutes in there, that to me is a sign that there is some difficulty with passing and um, there's a little bit of constipation there. Even if you are going daily, if it's taking a long time to pass, we need to help support your gut to function a little bit better because ideally you want an easy to pass bowel movement that happens quickly, but obviously not quickly with urgency. You know, you need to go, you make the time, you go. Never hold on to your bowel movements. So I know this can be hard with some jobs. Um, routine is really good if you can, obviously, um, but just always making sure you never hold on to um, bowel movements because it can make things a lot worse. So, I think that is all I need to discuss on poo. I'll just check my little notes. Yep. So, um, yeah, that is it. I hope you guys have learned something. I know that I did um, quiz you a little bit on your bowel movements during our consultation. And you were probably wondering, why do you want to know all about that? So, um, this is why. Because it does tell us signs and symptoms as to what's going on in our gut. Um, so take note, uh, I guess the other thing that I didn't mention is undigested food. That's really not a good sign either. So you might um, you know, be a little bit low in hydrochloric acid um, or digestive enzymes. So you might need to up that for a little while to get your digestive juices flowing and to get you um, to be able to break down your food properly and thoroughly because the um, more you break down your food, you know, you spend time chewing and digesting and sitting and digesting, then the better your nutrient absorption will be. If you're eating fast, shoveling it down, your tummy is working, your stomach's working really hard to push it out into the intestines, what's going to happen is you probably won't get all the nutrition that you should be getting from your food because um, you've kind of rushed it and made it happen in a hurry. Uh, yeah. So that is it guys. If you have any questions about bowel movements or what that might mean, if there's something that I didn't mention, make sure you let me know because I'm always happy to look into it or help explain what the answer might be to your question because knowledge is power. Okay guys, have a great week and um, we've got one more week left so I hope you're all doing really well. See you guys.